Okay, boys and girls, for our next project, we're going to design a logo. We're going to use graphic design to create this logo. So that means we're going to design it on the computer and we're going to be printing off our final designs. Let's talk about what a logo is though. A logo is a symbol or design used to represent an organization or its products. Logos can describe what a company is, what it sells, or what it's all about. So looking at these common four logos here, you should recognize what companies these are, but what do you see when you actually look at these logos? What colors, lines, shapes, or pictures do you see? Now, how do you think each logo is describing the company, what it sells, or what it's all about? Okay, now that we've seen some example logos and we've seen how those logos represent the company, we're going to talk about our project. So I'm gonna give you a challenge. You're going to imagine that you just created your own company and you need a logo to represent yourself or your products. You're going to create at least two versions of a logo that you can represent um, for you as a person or for your company and what it does or what it sells. You're gonna think about what describes you as a person and what describes your company. So for example, if I was gonna create an art company, um, I could create a, a logo that looks kind of like this um, I like art and my initials are NB, so I've added some art elements into this picture as well as my initials and it kind of all fits together in a nice radial design, that means a circular design. So we will be creating these logos entirely on the computer um, using an online art program called Sumo Paint. It's like a graphic design program, kind of similar to Photoshop if you've ever heard of that before. The reason why we're creating two versions of our logo is so that we can get two different ideas because if you were really designing a logo for a company, you would design many and then let your company pick their favorite. So your goals are to create at least two logo designs. Your logos need to be detailed, creative, and relate to you or your company. And you need to use the graphic design program Sumo Paint to create the logo. And then later you're gonna share your finished logo with me so I can print them. Before we actually create our logos though, you're gonna do some brainstorming. So you first need to figure out what do you sell for your company or what does your company do? So you're gonna answer that question first. Then you're gonna answer the question that says, what words describe your company? So if I had an art company, I might use words to describe my company like art or artsy or maybe another word to describe art in some way. So just list some words that could describe your company. Then what images would describe your company? So images are not words, images are pictures. So I could say um, paintbrush would be an image, um, maybe paint splatter. So I can describe my company in just pictures. Number four says sketch some quick examples of your logo down here. So you'll use a space to sketch just some quick ideas. Okay, once you finish that brainstorming, you're gonna get a computer and you're gonna get into the program Sumo Paint. So I wanna show you just a couple things that you can do in Sumo Paint and how you get to it. So Sumo Paint, we're just gonna go S-U-M-O-P-A-I-N-T dot com, Sumo Paint. Once you get into this website, you're just gonna click the button that says try online. We're not downloading anything, we're just using the free version online. It should pop up right here if you scroll down and then here's the program. There's a lot of tools that I'm gonna show you and then a lot of um, little sidebar menus. Sumo Paint is very complex. There's a lot to do in it. I'm just gonna show you some basic things that you can do though. Okay, so before we talk about the tools, we need to talk about this menu here that says layers. Layers is really important because when you put a new layer into your work of art, that's kind of like a new element. So if I had a circle here, a square here, and a triangle here, they should all be in their own layer. That will allow me to move the layers separately um, instead of moving the whole picture at the same time. So I have my first background layer here. Um, so what I'm gonna wanna do here, I'm gonna go full screen. I'm gonna to wanna to add a new layer. So I'm gonna to go to the layers menu here and click add new layer and then add new layer. So I, so far I have three layers here. If I need more, I can just keep adding more layers. So I'm gonna start with layer number one and add my first element here. So some of the tools here that you can use, let's just start with the basic tools here. Um, the pen tool or the ink tool allows you to add just drawing elements. So you can draw certain things. You can change the size to make bigger or smaller. You can change narrow or square. So you can change your um, mode of brush. You can change the opacity. That means if it's um, darker or lighter. 
I think you can also change the type of ink that it looks like it's creating on here. And you can also change the color. So down here, if I chose a color like red and I clicked OK, then my brush should come out red. Down here is the eraser tool. So you can um, use this to erase certain things. You can also change this to a solid brush and a bigger or smaller eraser brush, and you can get rid of certain things here. Um, there's some other tools that will allow you to add shapes. So this is the gradient tool. So if I go like this, wow, that's pretty cool. I can add a gradient here and change the type of gradient. Um, I can add shapes by using any of these tools here. So if I just go like this, I can create shapes. Right now it's on gradient. So if I change it though to solid and I change the color here, I can just do a solid square, a solid shape. Over here is the text tool. So if I click down here and I double click, I can start typing some text. Um, I can change the color of that text here if I click OK, and I can keep typing my text. Once I unclick the text, though, the text is going to be on there permanently. I can't move it around. So if I want to do text, I have to make sure that I put the text box in the right spot to begin with. I can change the font up here, bigger or smaller, for the text, and I can change what type of text it is. Over here is the paint bucket tool. I can change an entire area into one color if I just click down like that. Pen tool allows you to draw certain things just like the paint bucket tool and the paintbrush tool will allow you to draw as well. Um, the move tool is really helpful because it allows you to move your layers around. So if I click the move tool, I can move this entire layer around. Now if I go to my second layer though, and let's say I added a circle to the second layer, now, if I click on the move tool, I can only move that circle in the second layer. I can't move this layer. But if I go back to this layer, I can move that layer on the move tool. So the move tool is really helpful for just moving elements around in your work of art, but they have to be in their own layers here. Okay, there's a couple other funky tools here, like the line tool that allows you to add um, just straight lines. So if I go back to this layer, I can see straight lines. Um, let's see, zoom in and out. This one right here will allow you to zoom in, or if I change to minus, I can zoom out. Um, let's see here, crop tool, so I can take just a certain part away. If I didn't like that, I can go edit, undo. So there are a ton of tools here that will allow you to create your logos. Experiment with some of the other ones too, because there's a ton that I um, can't show you today. There's also one more thing I do want to show you though, is the filters. The filters are really fun because Let's say I was on this layer and I made like a, let's say I made like a square here. Um, I can take this square and I can go to filter and I can take different filters and change that, whatever's in that layer. So let's just say I went to pixelate, crystallize. It's going to bring up a little menu here and it's going to filter that shape. So filtering is just changing an element in a way in which um, is kind of fancy. So if I like it, I can click OK. Okay, so that's a lot of information here. We're going to go over saving your files now. So let's say I have something that I like, but I want to save it and work on it more next time. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to um, Save to my computer. This should be saved to my computer here. So you should be able to click Save to my computer, and then you should be able to name your file and save it to your computer. I'm not sure why mine's not coming up. Um, but we'll go over that at the end of class, saving to your computer, and then you can edit your file next week again. Okay, let's get started.